Hi everybody, I'm finally back to inform you about the space weather and solar cycle 25 in general. It is Monday, February 26, 2024 at around 4 o'clock p.m. here in Phoenix, Arizona. And there was an episode this morning while the news was breaking about a certain significant figure in our recent history have has moved on publicly and there was these large readings here in the Cumiana, Italy, very low frequency or VLF charts, basically measuring the amplitude of the very low frequencies from zero to a hundred and really zero to 15,000 Hertz on this particular resource in this website. So this was the graphic I shared this morning. One of you asked me to elaborate, so that's where we're going to begin today's video. And we're going to then move into the biggest news, which was the largest solar flare of Solar Cycle 25 so far, which was an X6 solar flare. Now, since that has happened on the 22nd, it's now the 26th, taken four days to talk about it because it fried my system and it wasn't just a temporary thing thankfully the sunspot that it came out of hasn't disappeared yet Ooh. it's over here it's right here and it's visible right now if you look out your window with those with those what's the word eclipse sunglasses basically that people wear you can buy them for not very much money it's a, a sun filter so you can look at the sun safely and see the sunspot actually at this time so I would encourage you to do that if you're a new learner and you're trying to believe that what, what I'm showing you on these screens is just a digitized more easily categorized version of the picture of the live Sun right now and in Cumiana Italy this morning, when all this news was breaking, we were having a large episode in the very low frequencies of Earth over by Kumian, Italy. Now, I looked in another location in Tomsk, Russia, and the location wasn't that active. But since this morning, things have calmed down, and you have to be quick with these things because these resources are constantly updating, and things often can go missed, and that's something I had to realize really early in the game of this and know that I was gonna have to really commit to looking pretty much every day to be sure I wasn't missing some significant data, which would be helpful for me in my own health management. But if you do miss something, I'm always there and you can join my Telegram chat room if you haven't done that yet and you're seeing my videos, you're getting something out of my videos and you have symptoms and you need help, you can go to my Telegram chat room which is where people who are, are experienced in this who know me who've had chats with me I've helped them out and now they're all helping each other out which is a lot more efficient so I can keep bringing more people in and doing what I'm really good at which is tracking the data accurately so this is the Russian charts as you can see there was very little activity in comparison in the extremely low frequency range which is just 0 to 40 Hertz instead of what's available in the Italian resource, which is a broader range, zero to 100 Hertz. Decibels are measured this direction, that's the amplitude. And in Russia, the decibels are, it's not in decibels, we believe it's in nano Tesla, that the amplitude's being measured. But here it's just in a, in a spectrum of color from black to basically white and I've noticed that things will go white when the amplitude is basically at 20 nano Tesla if not even less powerful it's very very subtle super subtle so here is the amplitudes of the first four Schumann resonances which are mathematically and are you know, physically the frequencies or the baseline frequencies of our planet that are in our atmosphere. These four frequencies are kind of like the baseline brain waves and life planetary waves that we live within and other planets have their own math and their own waves. And that's all on the Wikipedia page even if you need to start from the beginning and start fresh. I would encourage you to go begin researching but 
We had a very small episode yesterday, not this morning, that I was reporting about where the amplitude only hit a 21 in the first Schumann resonance, which is around 7.83 hertz, which is along here. So it's actually referring to this episode, which not only hit, you know, 7.83 hertz right here, but it looks like it stimulated the frequencies from 0 to 40 hertz, at least an amplitude of 21 nanotesla. So that's how you read this. If you are new to this, and if you are super new, want some help, you can go to my YouTube channel, and you can see from the beginning, basically, how I do this. I have a whole presentation. It's on my page. It's under Space Weather Classes. It's also in my link tree below this video. I try and make the resources available. They shouldn't be too hard to find. Moving on to the X6, as you can see, the atmosphere over <laughs> the atmosphere over Italy was also quite energized with lightning. Before we jump into the X6, I'm sorry, I just have to show you this because it's changed now. But when I was trying to do a video yesterday, Italy's over here. There was this just very long like lightning. I can't remember quite which direction. It was like going this way. Just this protrusion right here, right off the base of Italy. Now Cumiana is like up here. So now there's some lightning over here. So it's there's still a lot of lightning nearby the station. But yesterday I was observing that. But I never told you guys because I don't say everything I see. But I I have been working on doing my best to do that more, challenging myself to show you as much as I can. If you haven't noticed, so here's another part of that challenge is trying to teach you the solar flares, which is important during a major sunspot spotting on the surface of the sun, which is easy to do because these websites are always tracking the earth facing disc. Sunspots, when they get to the edge of this disc, according to us, flare and they'll flare us and it gets intense on earth. And that's what we study. So I'm waiting for this big boy to move all the way to the edge and flare, which is, I assume, kind of like the effect of the magnetic lines between us and this sunspot kind of getting broken. That sort of direct, you know, line of contact literally being broken and it causing kind of a response or a flash, which may just be like an effect of that. And I've been thinking about that more. I haven't been reading about that more. It's just been kind of coming through my mind. Please, of course, get way more perspectives on sun sunspots, solar flares, how they behave, what the magnetics are between the, it's called interplanetary magnetics, and the heliosphere as well. So these are some key words for you guys if you need for your own research. I'm just trying to make it as clear as possible, the words I'm saying, so you can follow and do your own research from what I'm saying. So here is the absorption prediction region of the X6 solar flare that we got on the 22nd. This is where the impact was over the Earth. Now you can see the date at the bottom here of this picture. This is where it'll always be. These pictures are being released by the NOAA over in Boulder, Colorado. So not too far from here. Shout out to our Colorado audience, you guys. Go check out the Boulder location or do some research on that. Maybe they do tours. Go say what's up. Because I appreciate their work. And if it's accurate, this is very helpful. Because we can see exactly where it was noontime, obviously, over the Earth. You don't need a map for that. You can look that up many ways to know what where on the planet is noon whenever you get a solar flare alert. Because that's direct sunlight impact of the day on our planet. Now as we're going into equinox over here in March, we're getting all of the blasts kind of more centralized on the earth again over the equator. So Hawaii is famously getting a ton of this radiation, but it's not just Hawaii. You can see there's a few other Polynesian sort of areas, the Pacific Ocean in general is getting hit, but not just that area. You can see here on the right hand side, New Zealand, parts of Indonesia and Australia as well, as well as the tips of, I would say, you know, <clears throat> Japan. So lots, the tips of also, uh, I would say Alaska, Russia, the United States, and then even just a little bit on the edges, 
of South America. All of that area was pretty much sunlight, daytime. It was daytime there, pretty much in that area. Getting this impact of this Earth Directed X 6.3, I believe they titled it. And that's the hard part with flares, but this one's a little easier because it was Earth Direct. But as a lot has happened since then, so I'm going to scroll generously down my feed here so you can kind of eyeball what has been going on while I get back to where we're supposed to go with this X6 information. So that is also a major note, is this X6 most likely has broken some of the equipment. I have not heard much news since that has happened, but I wanted to be sure that was true or not, but we, the sunspot basically began on February 22nd, giving an X 1.8 solar flare. And so everyone was already excited because pretty much the sun had already been giving a few X solar flares <laughs> the last like few hours. So that X six was actually the third large, it was the third X solar flare in 24 hours that had happened. And so the communications with a few of the nation, there were some nationwide outages being reported with AT&T. I did a little digging in the last moon mission. They were using AT&T with NASA to relay that data. So I was like, okay, that was a bit of a gimme. So something's going on with that network. Perhaps it was busy. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Because they were busy launching a Odysseus, basically, a lunar mission, a lunar rover from the United States, which has now since successfully, I think, been successful in landing and operating. But not only that, but the Japanese lunar rover that they thought they may have lost is also today resurrected, which is the choice of wording I am picking for today. But there was a resurrection today, and it was of the Japanese lunar module thing that was going on. I don't know a lot of the names and details of, but they're, they're, it's called JAXA, J-A-X-A is their institute for that stuff if you want to do the research. But yeah, things got heavy, you know, they were trying to classify it before it even finished, this solar flare, this X6. And the community is getting more excited because more people are following on Twitter, more people are retweeting, more people are participating. These people are doing better and better at their jobs, at reporting this stuff. So thank you for your interest because all of these people on Twitter, I've noticed they are getting more and more excited and reporting more and more minute changes and specific events as well as missing data. So I'm really impressed with that. And it just seems to be human nature. That's what we want to do. We want to find it all. We want to organize it the best we can, make it efficient. So here is that X6 that came in. As you can see, a very bizarre behavior that whole episode we were having. So we did have the X1, or sorry, sorry, I think this one was an M5. Okay, so this M5 dipped, but it looks like this was all the same sort of motion. It was all from the same sunspot. So this was sort of a very intense X-ray radiation endurance that we had this day and this was the day that the Avatar The Last Airbender live action series has released on Netflix and we had already previously decided we were not going to do anything else but watch that show so we were couch potatoes that day anyways and it felt great because it was exhausting like the energies were so heavy but we were there we were watching our show and we didn't get antsy we were enjoying being all nestled in and then the alerts started coming in. <laughs> As you can see, the alerts started coming in of this very large solar flare at around, around two, is that two o'clock for me? 23 would be four, so it's like around three o'clock, 3.30 I believe here in Phoenix was around that time on the 22nd, but you know, hour 22, 2, 22, 2024 at 22 hours, 34 seconds, like a ton of twos in there, even though it was an X3, 
So they threw in a few other different numbers, but wow, what a huge solar flare, just indescribable, <laughs> I would say, the light coming off of this thing, this reaction. Fantastic. People were loving it, and some of the stats are saying this is the biggest solar flare since September 2017. So where were you September 2017? Think back that there is a window between now and then that has just kind of opened and shut in a way when it comes to our radiation cycles, I would say, on a grander scheme of things. And I'm just learning these things now. I'm only a few years into this. <laughs> but all my friends who are researching their stuff, they're in the field and they're working hard. Here's a video of the X flares that happened beforehand and where they hit the look. So we had an X 1.9, then an X 1.7, and then the next day, the X 6. So this was the day before. This is the 21st, you can see here on the bottom, into the 22nd which is pretty incredible. So we had the X 1.9 on the 21st, an X 1.7 on the 22nd, and then another X 6, which is not shown here. She didn't update that in time while Artemis, or sorry, while Odysseus is being delivered to the moon. This was going on. Yes, the largest flare in over six years. This is sunspot 3590, which is still active. It's still doing things. And there's stuff on the backside of the sun also doing stuff, but no one's even been talking about it because we're all in shell shock, I think, from that X6 solar flare. I know I am. I'm looking for more stuff, but it's been just a blur of information since then. There's even been, on the 25th, there was an M2 solar flare I'm seeing here and <laughs> I even tweeted about it I don't even remember because <laughs> my brain's just been mush basically since the 22nd but the sunspot's still going and like I said it's gonna keep going until it gets to the limb over here and starts dancing around like there is some activity already this was happening. This guy was lifting off while that guy was lighting himself on fire by the United States Embassy. And it looks like a guy on fire to me too. It's just, it was just uncanny when I saw this. Maybe not if you, you know, I kind of gave you a warning on that. So I, I just kind of projected on the situation a little bit there for sure. But when I was looking at it, I was like, oh, it looks like a little dude. I don't know. Everything kind of looks like a dude where brains are pretty much designed to make everything look like faces and people so here's more details about the sunspot they're saying it's like 9.5 times larger than our planet right now and it it was 8.5 times yesterday so today it has grown in size and here is some comparisons to some of the other humongous sunspots that slammed the planet with solar flares and there's a blank slide interesting i hope whoopsie she must have <laughs> Actually, I don't know if this is a male or female. Sorry, Dr. C. Alex Young. I'm not sure. I haven't stalked you that much. Uh, there's still houses sliding into the ocean off of Dana Point, California. Obviously, I'm not going to cover this large death, but if you look at it, please just look at it. Take a look at it as a psychic medium, though. I do have some comments, but it's not appropriate I think the day of I always I don't know maybe there's like some sort of unwritten rules about that but usually it's like a three-day period where you're like okay you just let it let it sizzle and then you come back to it out of respect because I'm not trying to piss anybody off I'll tell you that five million times over I'm certainly not interested in upsetting anybody even though I do sometimes but I course correct usually when I figure out I've upset somebody Sometimes I can't help upsetting people, and that's the worst, but we got to get through it, and that's what these solar flares push us to do. So if anything, this video is saying, hey, we had a huge solar flare. It was over Hawaii. We didn't have any major volcanic activity except for over Mexico. There was a large volcanic uh, eruption in Mexico during that time. But since then, I've noticed things have been somewhat calm. There was a little more activity in Japan today. I'm just trying to get this to load. Here we go. So that was the 25th on the kind of backside. Wasn't earth facing. 
shouldn't be that concerning to us, just cute to look at. But, okay, yeah, so here we are back again, 23rd. It's not even loading it all the way. I, this, this, uh, this footage has been kind of slow. I can't tell exactly why, but not terrible. Usually when things get crazy, like an X6 solar flare, I was expecting a little more drama. I'll be honest with you, I was expecting more drama on the charts. I was expecting more stuff to break. And although I did see something may have broken, I'm not 100% sure on that, so I can't. I don't have an in, ironically, with any of these uh, companies, like the NOAA or anything like that. And, you know, I don't think I need to. I'm mostly just observing what they're publicly posting like anyone could. And all of my sources are in my link tree, in my bios on all my social medias, or on my website. My link tree bot link is on there too, at the bottom of my website, ascensiondiaries.com. All my stuff is labeled Ascension Diaries except for my Twitter, which is Ascension Diary, because they don't let me put that many characters. But overall, the sun, yeah, it's been sending a lot of smoke rings, it looks like. There's a ton of loop de doop -de coming out, so maybe those are just big, big ol' visitors coming out of the giant sunspot portal. You know what I'm saying? It's possible, because that's a wide doorway. I'm interested to see what all of you have been dreaming about astro projecting about while all of this has been happening if you've just been like a bump on a log like myself don't worry about it either the, the solar wind speed is a little strong this is a fun number 414.4 kilometers per second it should be around 400 so it's not that incredible honestly here is more information about the sunspot i posted today the sunspot is getting bigger. The aurora is not flaring up. I mean, gosh, that huge X6, it didn't even seem to give off a huge coronal mass ejection. It was kind of a clean flash, at least from what I saw in the footage. It felt pretty clean, too, but now I'm getting nervous about when it turns away and fa doesn't face us anymore and breaks off. I am feeling the nervous Nelly about that. So maybe if we get that sunspot to calm down and break apart and just end its little party before it gets to the limb, maybe that would be good as a manifestation. I'm going to put that vote in and see how that goes with the council, what feedback I get. When the solar wind speed starts to dump like this, though, where there's no data, like it just happened today, again, while Cumiana, Italy is getting busy, potentially, but yeah, we're missing some data in the most recent time here. Most recent hour, two hours. Mm-hmm. But that's okay because there's plenty of other stuff to be sure we're watching. Did you guys get Starlink yet for your Wi-Fi needs? Maybe that would be interesting for you because of what happened with your phones last time. Maybe, baby. It's a possibility. I don't know if there's any more data on here. Basically, I think I've told you everything I need to know, or you need to know if you want to do any more research. Okay, let's look at the top 25, sorry, the Solar Cycle 25 top 50 flares. We've got the X6.3 from 2.22, or February 22nd this year. Region 3590, which is still active, still going, might reach the other limb, hit us again. Could hit us again right now. It's literally just sitting there. You can go look at it, like I was saying. The last largest solar flare was an X5. That was right before the new year on December 31st, 2023. So substantially bigger than even the third biggest solar flare, which happened just a few days before the first biggest solar flare. And the fifth biggest solar flare was just a few days before the biggest. So we've had Basically, some of the top five, like three of the top five have happened. One, two, three, since February began. So February protection workshop was definitely important to protect our mind, body, and spirit from these large shifts that were destined for this month here at Solar Cycle 25. What a run it has been. Again, please, with your comments below, this helps a lot of shy people literally are just finding me now and they have no idea what's going on and I'm doing my best to stay relevant to the new people and the people who are 
well on their way watching me for years doing this. So please let me know if you need any more clarifications. I will type it back to you. I will screenshot it. I will be sharing it. I'm trying to give everybody the most education I can. All the resources, like I said, are in the link tree. Linktree.com slash Ascension Diaries if you can't find the link anywhere. It's on my website, ascensiondiaries.com. Like, I got you guys. I'm doing my best. So this particular chart is the sun in the middle. It's showing the waves from these coronal mass ejections and these solar flares. The most recent one, which was that M. I mean, gosh, let's just look right at the data if I can. But it was going away from Earth. And that little wave is going in the opposite direction from kind of anything that concerns us. It's going more towards Venus slightly, which is this little green dot over here. So this is a more Venusian wave. I think we're kind of out of the sticks of that X6 as well, like things have passed on. So if anything, we're gonna get another larger solar flare, Earth facing, or we're gonna get a little break until it goes to the limb. So the global consciousness dot was really weird today, but we had some really big news which kind of reoriented people's brains because of the global banking system, basically. If you didn't know that, the global banking system, basically the old system, one of the major advocates of that has passed away. Therefore, the new systems are obviously rising. So the global consciousness is behaving today in a way I haven't seen it before. Like this is very weird. It went into out of coherence and then all of a sudden some clarity came back. And it seems like we're now trying to stay in a more clear state with our brains and our thoughts and our emotions, as it says. Greed, oh, 70, a little more, I can't, we're greedier than we're not as fearful. So people are buying more than selling right now in the market, the crypto market. Bitcoin is basically blasting like crazy and it's pulling all the other coins up with it because really that's why it's number one. It's kind of like the starter or the pace maker in a way I would say of the market. But there's a lot of politics involved obviously because the banking system always has because if you don't have the right basis, base principles, you're going to have literally the army of heaven knocking at your doors constantly auditing you and making things fair for everybody and that has just been this like cat and mouse game i think i've been watching millennia so just keep that in mind <laughs> if that's been on your mind just be like okay this is this is a very old thing so there's got to be this some solutions let's welcome in those solutions in your mind how to find that peace again peace of mind is the greatest protection. Overall, the energy and the radiation on Earth is going up, but not as much as it had earlier this February. So we might be out of it, like I said. I think we might be out of some major radiation period here because I'm functioning again, and that's pretty much the big factor. Just trying to function while we have Idaho. We had Idaho getting very weird earthquakes today. Everyone in Idaho was like, what? So. Idaho, what the heck? What's up with that? Otherwise, maybe this a little odd. Bolivia. Let's go to the Bolivian pyramids. Yes. Uh, you guys look those up. Earthquakes. Earthquakes. We're trying to see who's angry where. Okay, a little more angry in Central America. Okay, that's why everybody's migrating out of here. Not a most stable landmass. It's pretty skinny. Just heads up on that. How skinny is your landmass? Maybe do a little more math on that. Look how much water is going on. Look how much water is melted up here. Just saying, skinny landmass. How skinny is your landmass? Does your landmass float? I don't know. Those are the questions I ask myself. Looks good though, nothing crazy so far. Honestly, I'm very impressed. On the day of the earthquake though, the X6, there was some earthquakes all over the world. Sorry, I just sneezed like two times. Anyways, earthquakes across the world, South Pacific shaking, okay. Otherwise today here on the 26th as things have calmed down, Barbuda Island, North Barbuda Island, what's going on over there? You're the other anomaly, but I'm seeing mostly normal conditions. 
normal conditions with the storms. Something's charging off the coast of Japan over here. Who lives over here? Landmass, skinny landmass. Skinny landmass codes over here. <laughs> I need to know geography better. I'll be honest with you, that's not what I went into in school. And now I need to catch up. Uh, there is a storm brewing over here, and you know what's playing in my head again is the freaking Airwolf theme song. Oh my gosh, does that play in my head now all the time? There really was an earbug they planted, so helicopters in Japan. Energy. Hello. I don't know. That's all I got. Psychic energy just kind of shoved its way into this broadcast. I apologize, but I'm going to let it happen because it's part of the defense squad. They're always letting us know. Okay, this is struggling. Woo! Here she is. Back at it again. Let's take a look at the impact around the Earth right now. It shouldn't be anything too out of the ordinary, but that's why we check. Looking less weird. Okay, excellent job everybody. Good meditating, good praying. We're on a good timeline. Okay, timeline efforts are being recognized. Good job. So now let's do the Mayan calendar. Today is again Monday, February 26th. Galactic 20 solar solar sorry, solar plexus chakra, the red crystal moon guided by birth. Kin 129. Interesting, guided by birth except there was a famous death today, but the birth of the Japanese, you know, lunar module thingy that came back to life again today thinking about homie okay blue western castle of burning earth family gateway clan blood i dedicate in order to purify universalizing flow i seal the process of universal water with the create crystal tone of cooperation i'm guided by the power of birth interesting Her kin 129 harmonic 33 lunar process formulate free will of challenge Excelente. Very esoteric. I don't have comments on that as much this time around. So let's move along. We just had our full moon. So we had the X6 boom on the 22nd in Leo moon. So everybody's hearts and their blood pressure and everything may have been affected. Then into the weekend, Saturday, I had <laughs> literally it was the full moon in Virgo. It is actually recommended you don't get surgery this day, but I actually know somebody who got kidney surgery, a kidney transplant this day, and it went well. So thank goodness, so far so good. 10 out of 10. All right, now we are in the transition period into Libra, right as I'm speaking. We're moving into Libra moon right now. So this is the waning gibbous. We're now, the full moon is going to deflate. The energy of the moon is going to deflate for the next few, you know, weeks. So we did it, we maxed out. Hopefully you started your parasite cleansing over the full moon. It's not too late to start, just start, just start, just start, just start, but you have to keep doing it every day. Set an alarm on your calendar or your phone or something. Just something that says parasite cleanse. So you know you do something that day, every single day towards that goal, no matter what. Just make some sort of little nudges forward. It'll all, snowball and you'll be good and you'll be happy you did it you just gotta start and uh yes yeah, so we're moving into kidney energy now so thankfully those ladies can heal up those kidneys and be on their merry way and shout out to them they are inspiring to be and many others and all of you who've had transplants feel free to talk to me about it it is in my family and in my life and it's also advised upon in astrology so we've got that if you need some surgical advice that's also involved check out mooncalendar.astroseek.com for that information for show okay aurora energy seems to be reporting up so we might see a little aurora tonight guys that's exciting when is alaska gonna turn their cameras back on obviously the sun has to set i'm just getting too excited this will go up, otherwise we need some Aurora, please. Hey guys, also thanks for subscribing to my YouTube channel. Mad love to you. We're almost at 7,000 subscribers. Listen, I don't want to get too famous, okay? So just subscribe if you really mean it, alright? 
for real and my Instagram too and I don't want any bots pushing me too hard okay this is this is this has got to be the real deal stuff I'm not trying to get fancy so I only want to talk to real people <laughs> and uh, thank you for sharing me with real people you guys I appreciate it I'm here to entertain so thank you for the love let's look at all the planets that have moved into Aquarius Pluto Mars and Venus are in Aquarius right now Pisces the Sun Neptune Saturn and Mercury are in Pisces right now that's the biggest amount of information that's happening all the stuff that's closest to the Sun for sure but also fun fact today Pluto and the moon who's all the way over here trined today Pluto and the moon so they're in like a triangular structure to each other in the sky and so that was interesting for this death portal the king of death or the god of death Hades or Pluto mixing or trining which is a strengthened kind of aspect to our moon and our sort of soul mirror maybe I should call it because it is this mirror of our soul or the Sun the soul mirror and what was going on today the death of these illusions and these shadowy things the moon card is something you may want to look up in tarot here's my link tree guys you may recognize it it's all here all the goodies to find me and then all the goodies to find everything I study and all the apps I use and blah 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 and I'm updating it all the time but if something's weird just reach out to me because I am tech support I am everything I'm also designing clothes for you guys and I'm keeping the prices low and I'm using the 100% or, or cotton shirts so it's 100% cotton so at least you're getting pure pure linen or not pure linens but you know I mean like clothing they're purely one thing 100% cotton so I have some stuff about the space weather and some other goodies if you're interested you know wear something cute feel cute that's part of the codes here at Ascension Diaries it's part of protecting yourself as well with natural materials and with your dignity intact follow my Instagram if you're not yet that's where the party's really at that's where most of you are at we're almost at 30,000 follow followers over there again I'm trying to scare off all the bots so this doesn't like keep pushing me into other weird territory on the algorithms where they're watching me <laughs> so I'm like yeah yeah bots get the heck out of here if you hate me unsubscribe like I'm not you know that's not the goal but I'm grateful but I'm also like I'm treading lightly as I do with my comedy as well and I don't want to keep triggering people I want to have fun with like-minded people and I want to work with like-minded people too so if you're ready for a session with myself I do personal coaching over a span of five weeks or, or longer basically that is negotiable I do one-on-one -on -one sessions that are just a hour and I do sessions that are over email which give me a week to fully get some information about you and again I do donation based sessions here too so if none of that works for you and you need something else mothers fathers brothers sisters out there you guys I, I am completely flexible I'm the flexible one just let me know how I can help and we will sort it out the flexible social person over here I was built for it <laughs> and on my patreon we do humbly you know I gather your guys's you know donations over here to join in the newsletter so I can send you all of the articles all these videos all the invites to the live streams all the workshops that I do please join my patreon love up on me over there it would mean the world to me thank you so much it really really helps it's always there as a baseline to keep me sovereign in this world for real you have no idea how helpful it's been and yeah I can't describe it and if you are somebody interested in using patreon or some sort of thing for your particular work if you are an entrepreneur like myself I would recommend it because it is so nice to have that help we are so much stronger as a team seriously and this is the Aurora cam I wanted to show you see the aurora.com slash webcams 
there's a whole roster of different cameras. So you can chase the webcams actually around the poles to see which one is getting the best footage right now. So for example, we could try this and see if anything's loading right now in the sky with the Aurora. So yeah, you can physically see it even though you can tell they're, they're trying to give me cookies. But over Norway, there's a little bit of Aurora loading right now. If you can see it, it's very subtle. It maybe has to get even a little darker. But for real, there it is. There's a little bit visible. Thank you, God, for making better webcams. And those of you who live in these areas, you could get a ton of views and make a lot of money on YouTube if you just set up a live stream for the webcams. Now, I've got a bunch of stuff on here that I haven't talked to you about in this time since I've seen you. I've gone to the Renaissance Festival, which has been great. We had this full moon, which was called the Snow Moon. And on Avatar The Last Airbender, they actually call it the Ice Moon. And on the Avatar The Last Airbender season one, they end off the series that I watched all on the 22nd, all on the day of the X6. The end is a battle about with the spirit of the moon and the moon temporarily dies in the episode and is then resurrected using in a way almost a horcrux of the moon which was very interesting so the moon was rebirthed I would say after nearly killed and then sending the ocean spirit into basically a rampage forever totally taking over the soul of the Avatar and using it to exact its revenge on the world, basically to constantly and forever search for its partner, the moon. So thankfully they were able to res resurrect the moon with the Horcrux, but in this sense it was a good thing. So final notes on this, me being weird forever and ever, is about the February protection workshop that I just did. So on my YouTube channel, there's a February protection workshop workshop live stream in the live stream tab where I'm channeling information from a few celebrities one of them is is Claire or Grimes now controversial topic aside whether or not this person is alive or dead is a little bit controversial but we didn't we don't need to go into that now but what I've been getting guided along following those breadcrumbs since for those of you who need an update is I was followed around pushed to watch the 2004 Athens Olympic opening ceremonies, which I would recommend watching for sure. For sure would recommend watching. And Bjork, I think that's how you say her name, performs at the very end of it, who gives me a very Grimes vibe. And a friend of mine actually it had talked to some of, of Grimes' friends in LA and heard some of their qualms about them all kind of being in this sort of airy fairy sort of artistic looping sampling sort of whatever music making industry so it's it's not just her who makes music like this but Bjork and other beings like her have this kind of you know siren fairy whisper in the wind kind of eerie energy and she's, there's other artists like this. So everyone's kind of sampling from each other and being influenced by each other. And that's what I was kind of being guided to was this song that she sang at the end of the Olympics. And the lyrics are about Oceana and how our salt and our tears are the reason why they're salty is because of the ocean that kind of is where we all came from. And so it says, one breath away from Mother Oceana, your nimble feet make prints in my sand. You have done good for yourselves since you left my wet embrace and crawled ashore. Every boy is a snake, is a lily. Every pearl is a lynx, is a girl. Sweet like harmony made into flesh. You dance by my side, children sublime. You show me continents, I see islands, which we were talking about also with either the Hawaiian Islands, but also all of the continents being the islands of Atlantis. So anyways, that's a little insert I have to put. We talked about it that in the finale of the Harry Potter set, the Harry Potter series, the finale or the seventh video. So here's the rest of the lyrics. It says, you count the centuries, I blink my eyes. 
Hawks and sparrows race in my waters. Stingrays are floating, which stingray Jesus or the stingrays that are about to be born in the Illinois Zoo are being very much like touted as cause kind of like again this this second coming or this like messiah messianic energy coming through it's coming through the stingrays right now symbolically on earth so this is important stingrays are floating across the sky little ones my sons and my daughters your sweat is salty i am why i am why i am why your sweat is salty i am why i am so basically, I don't know anything about her or her work, but this is where I was guided. And so this is kind of where I'm leaving you off on this episode of Space Weather Update and Solar Cycle 25 research. Okay. And we're getting, I don't want to make like huge esoteric claims about what the space weather is doing, but in a way I'm seeing all of these sort of things happen around me and these themes and that's what I like to weave in alongside the space weather so I'm not making claims but I am weaving in all of these patterns and symbols I'm seeing and sometimes I even post things on my Instagram where I don't even know exactly why I'm posting it yet and that happened the night before this particular situation I posted this stack with a song from Toby Keith again and it just felt like this stack was trying to give me codes about what was going to happen the next morning so if you're interested in kind of digging into that and that more symbolic side of the diary I would encourage you to check that out on my Instagram if you can follow along I know some of you are more tech savvy than others so that's why I make these videos and I do what I do on all these platforms to reach as many people as I can. So with that being said, you guys are subscribing. You guys are checking out my website, checking out my offerings as they're always changing in price and in time and in what I'm actually doing. Stick with me. I'm flexible. Go to my website. Leave your email anyways if you want to keep track of me. Hit those notification bells on all of the social medias that you want to follow me on. I love you all so very much. Big encouraging hugs from me along your path. Keep following those breadcrumbs. And I'm trying to show you how to do so by exploiting my own breadcrumbs and sharing my data from my sessions and so on too. From talking to all of your dead ancestors who come and visit me through you. So if you're like, oh, I've been needing to talk to my ancestors. I need my spirit guides. I need to know this or that. I would love to help you, honestly, because we all do it. We all reach out to each other and eventually we get these answers from one another in some way. It's a tale as old as time. I'm just sitting here in my little, you know, online area, ascensiondiaries.com, just waiting, my little kiosk. If you need me, I'm just chilling here, so. I hope that vibe has come across. I've repeated it probably a million times. Love you all so much. I'll see you on the next video. I got to do a big symbols video for March. It's going to be soon. So many symbols, you guys. Oh, my gosh. Okay. Onward we go. Bye, guys.